DHM, Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experience Radio, broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. Hello there and welcome back to Fate Mag Radio. I'm Kat Hobson, your host, with my guest, Andrew Smith, and we are talking about the Flatwoods Monster in Braxton County, West Virginia. This was a 1950s experience, and apparently we're finding out that this went on for much longer than I was aware of. Right, Andrew? Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, not really much longer. I mean, it's it's really just a, a few it's just a few days um, that all these occurrences happened, and then um, after that, you know, there really hasn't seemed to be any activity that that um, is similar, as far as I know of, at all since. Well, that's even more amazing. I mean, why was it just then, right? Right. Yeah, that's that's the thing. I don't know my. You know, kind of my working theory is that maybe, you know, something happened that, uh, you know, maybe, you know, something crash landed or something um, had to land and it wasn't supposed to. And maybe maybe some, some entities or an entity was maybe stranded for a little while, had a couple encounters and then was rescued or fixed a ship or, you know, what, you know, something is something that I don't know, you know, like circumstances change and then it's you know zoom out of here Mm -hmm. well i just i hope it zoomed safely yeah yeah me too well and and you know nobody that came in contact with it other than um you know some maybe some mild nausea as far as i know you know every everybody is safe and um you know didn't really have any adverse effects other than scaring the daylights out of a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Somebody in chat, Brenda, just said a government project gone wrong, maybe. Did you hear anyone that said that they felt like this was human-based? Um, not really. Um, no, nothing that I've heard from, from witnesses or from investigators, either then or, you know, up through the ages up till now, nothing that I've heard of you know, sounds like um, that they experience some sort of, you know, covert operation. Um, and mainly, I'll tell you why th- that I think that too is because up till now, say if they were um, seeing something covert from the 50s, I would think that that technology would have been refined and put in place to where currently either we would have it or see see some kind of resemblance to it. Um, Maybe now, because that just seems such a long time to have something and not know about it. But I guess you know that's you know change of things have happened. But uh, but you know very possible. But to me, every time I come back and look at this story, um, I I either go two ways with this. I either think extraterrestrial, or I think possibly you know maybe some kind of I don't know demon or some other potentially interdimensional sort of um, sort of feeling, you know, based, based purely just on the information I have, which as far as I know may have holes in it. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's my best, that's my best guess. Interesting. You know, especially, are you going with the demonic possibility because of the sulfur, possibly sulfuric odor? Well, there's that, and then there's just um, at times in the story, you know, there there almost seems to be like a, a malicious intent, um, and then there also kind of seems to be like, um, I don't know, like things that that appear to maybe kind of defy um, the the physical world. Um, so if they're defying the physical world, then you know, because even things that are from outer space have to contend with gravity and matter and, you know, organisms still have to eat and, you know, they still exist in, in time and space. So that that's that's kind of one thing, you know, because there's there's kind of some things that almost suggest like, you know, these that this maybe slipped in and out. 
Um, although, given that it seems to be isolated to a particular time and place, that kind of lends itself to a more physical, uh, you know, whether terrestrial or extraterrestrial, um, being that it was confined to a specific location for a specific amount of time and then seemingly never to be repeated. So, you know, at least here. Right. And, and I've never heard any other stories that that fit the mold of the Flatwoods monster quite quite right, you know, other than these few stories. Well, you know, I haven't either. And over the last four and a half or five years, I have delved into all kinds of research because of what I do. I mm-hmm. I have not come across a figure like this, if it were alien, a description of aliens that meet this one. I've not come across... Yep aliens that just hiss at you yeah. you yeah. know I, it, it's very it's very unusual in mm-hmm. just what I've researched so far yes yeah very unusual so I know that um, you were telling me that, that there's another experience yes yeah um, one that um like I said, just in the last couple of years, has seen, you know, public light. Uh, before then, um, the story of uh, Audra Harper um, that took place in Heaters, West Virginia, as according to her recount, um, she doesn't know exactly, you know, what date it took place, but she knows that it was prior to the September um, 12th incident that happened in Flatwoods. Um and that was, uh, you know, she lives in Heaters. Her name was Audra Harper. Um, and, uh, but this would have been still in, um, in September. She knows that. She knows it was in September um, because of the, of the uh, you know, the foliage and, and that sort of thing. Um, she was in the start of fall for sure because where she lived, um, you know, once we want to kind of get in the fall and the cold, wet seasons, uh, a lot of the roads – um, become kind of rutted and and uh, hard to use, especially with the vehicles they would have had at the time and the fact that they weren't paved. You know, at, at best they would be stone roads, but usually they were dirt roads, uh, like I said, that would get rutted and, and kind of impassable. Mm-hmm. And um, where she lived was a fairly secluded area of Heater, which Heaters itself is fairly secluded, um, but she lived in a fairly secluded area of Heaters. Um, and to get to the closest store, You would either have to drive roughly eight miles on, you know, curvy back roads that, like I said, were dirt or gravel at best. Um, Or you could actually walk through a a hollow that was just woods from her house to that store that was about a mile, so much closer. Um, And like I said, this time of year, it was kind of impassable anyway. And actually, I think that she may not have even been, like, she may not have drove, and her husband would have been away at work. So she and a neighbor, a friend of hers, decided that they needed, uh, you know, something from from the store. So instead of walk the road, which would have taken forever, they walked, um, you know, the path in between through the woods, which they did commonly. And um, they were going to walk to, you know, pick up some supplies and um now this wasn't quite as late in the evening as the other stories this was probably you know back whenever they could pretty well rest assured they could walk back with enough light to where they could see right. um but it still wasn't it wasn't bright it wasn't noon or anything but it was you know later in the evening and um so they they start walking and they they get about halfway through their trip maybe maybe a third of the way through their trip actually is a little bit more accurate um the family has actually sat down and plotted the points um like with a with a google maps you know satellite snapshot and based on her description you know kind of plotted out where roughly these things might have taken place so um so they're about a third of the way through their trip and they notice kind of up on a nearby hillside clearing that there's a fire, um, but they just assume it was a neighborhood um, a neighborhood guy that uh, you know did trapping and fox chasing and that sort of thing. That that's he just had a camp over there, uh, didn't even really think much of it. 
because, you know, fires were pretty common. So they keep walking. As they get closer, they notice that this fire actually isn't just a campfire, but appears to be like a glowing or a floating ball of fire hovering above the ground. So they, as they're looking at it in amazement, the fire appears to just blink out, and in its place, a tall, about 10 feet tall figure is standing that, as far as she could tell, she describes it as like collarless or like devoid of collar. Um, she says black, but there's other terms in her, in her, um, in, in what she wrote that, that almost make it seem like it was, it was like, rather than being black, it was like devoid of light, if that makes sense. It you does, know, more yes. like a, like a, like a figure or an apparition almost. Um, like a shadow figure. But, yeah, yeah, uh, but you know, big. It was it was big. It was too big. <laughs> so, so they immediately, you know, instantly terrified and begin to run as fast as they can because they're they are not very far through their trip. They're by themselves and they're in the middle of the woods uh, with nothing to protect themselves. So they they just run and run, and every so often they'll look over their shoulder and the figure's still there keeping up with them. Uh, and then, you know, look back again later, and it's closer. It appears to be gaining ground on them. So as they're running in fear, they finally get to this fence that's about two-thirds away um, to the, their final destination, open up a gate, turn back, shut it, keep running. And as they keep turning back, they realize this figure that they can see has stopped at that gate and not gone any further. Well, that's um, odd. Yes. So then they, they get to where they're going, get to the store. There, there's a store and then a, a bar right beside of it. So, you know, that's where I would have gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they, they can, well, but that's really all there was. Like where they were headed, that's where the, that's what there was um, at this, which was at Falls Mills mm-hmm. um, in Braxton County. And there was really nothing else other than very distant neighbors. You know, that's would have been it. Um, so they, they, you know, kind of, drop their shopping plans and and run around and without really they didn't really want to talk about what had happened to them but they were obviously shaken up and walk walking around talking to people that they knew and was like asking does anybody have a gun that we can borrow for our walk back again without explaining why just do you have a gun we can borrow uh or can you give us a ride so then finally they get you know a local um a local man that lives in the area that said that they will you know, give him a ride back to their home, you know, once he's done at the bar. So rather than leaving, they just sit and wait for him to finish. And he gives them a ride back to their home. And according to her granddaughter, she never walked that path again for the rest of her life. I could understand that. Yeah. So did anyone else ever encounter that that she heard of? No, no, that's that's all that she heard of. Because actually, her her account that she wrote down, um, she actually sat down to write it in the '60s. Because um, that's well, that's about when she would have had a, uh, um, a, a you know a typewriter. So it, I thought it had occurred to her, and this is what she had told her um, her granddaughter that I know that um, you know should something happen to her, should she have like an accident, should she develop, you know. Alzheimer's, you know, if if she hadn't gotten this stuff down on paper, there might not be any record of it. So she actually sat down and typed up three pages of everything unusual that had ever happened to her, just so that way it existed. Because like I said, she she talked to friends and family, but she didn't really want to talk to anybody else about it. But at the same time, she didn't want the stories to just go, you know, go away. And actually, in these three pages, not only does she tell this story, but she talks about, you know, a couple of things that happened to her that appear to be hauntings. Um, and she talked about, you know, seeing strange things in the sky, um, like, uh, you know, unidentified flying objects in the sky that she had seen while living, again, in, in heaters. Um, you know, many, many different things. Um and one actually, one story that's in that is uh, she talks about um, whenever her her uh, husband was home, and that uh, she could hear um, they're, they're, they they rather could hear something that sounded like somebody going through their outbuilding. Um, oh my! 
But you know he what? Went out. 